Schools are a place of learning, a sanctuary of education. They are also, if the following accounts are to be believed, a hotbed of paranormal activity and mysteries. Before I begin, I'd like to take a moment to thank Amino for sponsoring this video. Amino is a community-based app that helps you connect with others who share your interests. With your iOS or Android device, you can explore every passion on the planet. The app has many suitably chilling Aminos for you to discover, such as horror and creepypasta. However, I personally enjoy Paranormal Amino. The curators there certainly know how to spot interesting content, meaning that there's always thought-provoking posts on the featured feed that have been shared by fellow users. In particular, I found this post about birds as omens and signs especially interesting. As well as reading posts, you can take part in polls, quizzes, and live chats. You can also see what's happening in real time. If you want to live chat about the paranormal, the app allows you to have conversations with people all over the world, both in message form and using an avatar. After you finish watching this video, I'd love it if you could take part in my poll on Paranormal Amino about the five cases that I'm about to cover. Links are in the description. So, without further ado, let's count down five of the most mysterious paranormal occurrences to have happened in schools. Founded in 1440 by King Henry VI, Eton College is an English independent boarding school for boys in Eton, Berkshire, near Windsor. Having educated 19 British Prime Ministers, generations of the aristocracy, and other high-profile figures, the school has a prestigious reputation and is the most famous private boys' school in Britain. As old as it is, one would expect the college to have tales of ghosts and ghouls in abundance. And indeed, there are many reports that the establishment is haunted by several apparitions, including a grey lady. However, the following story does not involve spirits of the dead, but instead, the dark actions of the living. In May 1917, a 13-year-old Eric Arthur Blair was offered a scholarship at Eton College. Blair, who stayed at the school until December 1921, is better known by his pen name, George Orwell, and was the renowned author of the celebrated works 1984 and Animal Farm. During his time at the college, he was interested and happy, and demonstrated great poetic ability. As well as literary art, Orwell also dabbled in the occult art of black magic. When at school, Orwell developed a strong friendship with Stephen Runciman, who would later go on to become a distinguished medieval historian. Shortly before his death in the year 2000, Runciman wrote a letter in which he confessed that he and his friend Orwell had practiced black magic whilst together at Eton. The result of their dabblings had meant that Orwell spent the rest of his life believing that they had ended the life of a fellow pupil. Orwell had become fascinated with the occult after reading several volumes of ghost stories, including one story which told of a maid making a wax doll of her mistress and skewering it with a pin, for it to have lethal consequences. After moving to the boarding school, Orwell had caught the attention of an older boy called Philip York, who proceeded to threaten and bully the younger boy. Determined to get his own back on his tormentor, Runciman offered Orwell a plan for revenge, suggesting that he should take inspiration from the ghost story he had read. Together, they practiced black magic by means of a voodoo doll of the bully. Their initial hunger for revenge, however, transformed into horror when York first broke his leg and then, only a few months later, developed leukemia and died. Runciman's deathbed confession described the series of awful events. Our making a wax effigy of an older boy whom we disliked for being unkind to his juniors was, I am ashamed to say, my idea. Blair found that interesting and willingly collaborated. It was he who moulded the melted candle into a very crude human body. He wanted to stick a pin into the heart of our image, but that frightened me, so we compromised by breaking off his right leg. And he did break his leg a few days later playing football, and he died young. Did Orwell and Runciman tap into the paranormal and powerful magic of voodoo? Or was the injury and death of Philip York simply a tragic coincidence.
Situated in the north of India is Dal Hill. The hill is the site of two schools, Dal Hill Girls Boarding School and Victoria Boys High School. Both schools and the surrounding hillside are described as hotbeds of paranormal activity. The schools are situated one kilometre apart. Although they appear to be separate institutions, the schools have a shared history. Originally, Dow Hill School educated both girls and boys. However, as educational demands in the area grew, the boys' school was shifted to a new building with a new name. Founded in the same year as the Diamond Jubilee of Queen Victoria, 1897. Of the two schools, it is the boys' high school which is most famous for ghost sightings. Since it was founded, the school has educated generations of students. Students who, it would seem, do not always want to leave the school. It is said that discarnate footsteps and voices can be heard in the school's corridors. Such ghostly phenomena is said to be more acute during the holiday season when the entire school is shut down. Despite the building being empty, local people speak of how they often hear boys running and laughing in the corridors. Apparitions have also been spotted at Victoria Boys High School. Some people have reported witnessing a boy standing at one of the windows, staring at them from inside while the school was closed. Most chilling, however, are the stories of a headless boy spirit who wanders the corridors. As well as in the school, he has been seen outside on the premises and in the forest that surrounds Dal Hill. According to local people, the terrifying child has been known to follow lone walkers as they make their way through the forest. Other paranormal phenomena reported in the forest includes disembodied red eyes, staring through the trees, a ghostly woman in white, and whispering voices. The area is so notoriously haunted and associated with tragedy that the road between the school and the forest is somewhat appropriately named Death Road. However, perhaps the most mysterious occurrence surrounding the schools took place in February 2016, when the girls' school on Dow Hill suffered a major fire. The fire was so extensive that it took six hours to extinguish the flames, which irreparably damaged the over a century old building. Luckily, as the fire broke out during the winter holiday, no one was inside the school when it caught fire. Yet, this led to questions as to how the fire could have started, and why it began during the time of year which is most strongly connected to paranormal occurrences on Dow Hill. New Hartford High School in New York is nationally recognised as an institute of academic excellence. It has also been described as one of the most reportedly haunted locations in New York. It is no secret that the school, the first building having been erected in the early 19th century, was built on an old burial ground for pioneers. There is even a plaque on the property which explains the school ground's history. The memorial, a monument to the present central school grounds over a vault containing bodies of pioneers, reads, Site of the Old Burying Ground 1788-1953, in memory of those hardy pioneers who helped found a nation and who settled this village and valley. The remains of 277 first settlers were moved from the site prior to the construction of the high school. However, far from being the entire burial ground, since that time, skeletons have continued to be unearthed at the school. In 2009, the local newspaper The Observer Dispatch reported that remains had been found on the school grounds during maintenance and construction. This wasn't the first time such a grisly discovery was made at the school. In August 2004, human bones, including a mostly intact skeleton, were dug up during another construction project. Remains were also found in 1990, as well as in the 1930s and 1950s, when additions to the original school were being built. The old burial ground is said to be the reason why so much paranormal activity is reported at the high school. It is said that shadowy apparitions roamed the grounds, and that phantom laughter has been heard by students. Objects are claimed to move impossibly, seemingly of their own accord. There are even reports that the school is so haunted that some have quit working there because of their ghostly encounters. One student reported that, Personal experiences have led many to believe that it is haunted. 
Many have seen the one ghost in the halls, including me. She is a short figure, and is always by a window. Whilst many of the spirits at the school have been described as friendly, there are some reports of a bad entity which lurks in the auditorium. After doing a show in the auditorium in 2014, psychic medium Maureen Hancock described how she felt there was a higher energy at the school. She also said that, there is a guy that hangs around here, a spirit. The careless treatment of some of the pioneers' remains is often cited as the reason for the spirit's inability to move on. And with bones constantly being unearthed at the school, it does not seem likely that they will find peace anytime soon. For this paranormal account, some historical context is required. Oliver Cromwell is one of the most controversial figures in the history of the British Isles. A military and political leader, he is remembered for his role in the English Civil War, the abolition of the monarchy, and the execution of King Charles I. From 1653 until his death, Cromwell replaced the King as Head of State, serving under the title of Lord Protector of the Commonwealth of England, Scotland, and Ireland. His new republic, however, was not to last long. Soon after his death, the old King's son was able to return to power as King Charles II. The monarchy was restored, and Oliver Cromwell was to receive punishment for his treason albeit posthumously. Cromwell's body was disinterred from Westminster Abbey in the January of 1661 and taken to Tyburn, historically the principal place for execution of London criminals and convicted traitors. There, his body was hanged in chains, thrown into a pit, and ceremoniously beheaded. Afterwards, Cromwell's severed head was displayed on a spike at Westminster. In the centuries that followed, the grisly object passed through a number of keepers, until eventually finding its way to Sydney Sussex College, a college of the University of Cambridge. In 1960, Oliver Cromwell's well-travelled head was finally reburied in secret in the college's chapel. However, even after so many centuries, its story was far from over. Seven years after the reburial, the University of Cambridge's student newspaper reported that several students had bizarre experiences near H. Staircase of Sydney Sussex College. Just after Halloween, in the early hours of the 1st of November 1967, Linda Niels Siddle was terrified by what she described as a purple eye, staring out at her from the blackness of the night. Another student, John Emsley, reported seeing a floating, disembodied head. A third student sensed a presence in his room and was overwhelmed by the smell of rotting meat. After the event was reported, other students came forward, claiming that they too had experienced inexplicable odours in the college, which were widely likened to spoiled meat. Skeptics have ridiculed the reports as Halloween hysteria. However, others have announced suspicions that the strange occurrences were in fact the result of Oliver Cromwell's ghost haunting the college. And indeed, these are not the only reports of ghostly activity associated with the college. Aside from Oliver Cromwell, the college is said to be haunted by other spirits, including an elderly man dressed in grey. The most terrifying account, however, dates back to the 19th century. On the 12th of August, 1841, the Morning Post reported a peculiar incident at the College Lodge. According to the report, inhabitants were alarmed by a supernatural visitation of a very awful description. On Friday night last, about the dread hour of midnight, the nursery maids who were about retiring to rest were terrified by hearing several strange and mysterious noises. The sounds appeared to proceed from the staircase. Presently, they ceased, and the door of the nursery was slowly opened, and a figure of tall and unnatural proportions presented itself before the horror-struck maids. The appearance had a head white and ghastly, long legs also white, but the body was distinguished only by a dim outline. The body was a shadow, it was a thing of head and legs. The affrighted maids rushed, shrieking from the room, the lodge was aroused, the police were called in, but no trace of the apparition was visible, unless a curious odour which perfumed the apartment might be considered so. The affair remained shrouded in mystery. 
What the maids witnessed was a terrifying vision indeed, and one of many paranormal mysteries reported from Sydney Sussex College. On the morning of the 6th of April 1966, in a suburb of Melbourne, Australia, students at the Westall High School were outside playing sports. Little did they know that they were about to be witness to what is said to be one of the most famous UFO incidents in history. According to witnesses standing on the sports field, an unidentified flying object flew over the high school's southwest corner. It then descended behind trees which lined an open wild paddock. After approximately 20 minutes of being out of sight, the mysterious object reappeared, with the group of witnesses on the sports field having now swelled in size. They reported the object as having gained altitude at considerable speed. Flying towards the northwest, five additional unidentified aircraft appeared as if to pursue the original object. This chase, described as a cat and mouse game by a teacher from the school, lasted a while before the original mysterious object and the five aircraft flew away from Westall High School and over the suburb of Clayton South. At the time, a science teacher at the high school, Andrew Greenwood, gave a detailed description of the aircraft to local media. He stated that the flying object was like a thin beam of light, about half the length of a light aircraft. It was silvery grey and seemed to thicken at times. The thickening was similar to when a disc is turned to show the underside. Testimonies from students seemed to confirm Greenwood's description, with it being described as saucer-shaped and silver-grey in colour. 44 years after the event, in 2010, Terry Peck, who had been a student at the school at the time of the incident, stated that she still remembered what happened that day. She described how she and her classmates chased after the object when it started to descend behind the trees in the paddock. I was about six meters away from it. It was bigger than a car and circular. I think I saw some lights underneath it. Two girls were there before me. One was terribly upset and they were pale, really white, ghostly white. They just said that they had passed out, fainted. One was taken to hospital in an ambulance. As extraordinary as it sounds, Peck's testimony and the description of the object is one of many. Media reports from the time estimated that hundreds of children and a number of teachers witnessed the mysterious silver object that morning. Afterwards, students claimed that they were told to keep quiet about what they had seen. This has led many to speculate that the government attempted to cover up the event. In 2010, Jacqueline Argent, who had witnessed the UFO as a student at Westall High School, came forward claiming to have been interrogated by three men in the headmaster's office. According to her testimony, they had good quality suits and were well spoken. They said, I suppose you saw little green men. Of course, it is easy to discredit some of the later testimonies and allegations of conspiracy as a consequence of the bandwagon effect. Yet, skeptics who have studied the case in the decades that have followed have been unable to explain conclusively the strange schoolyard incident. Despite the suggestion of an object being an experimental aircraft, there is no evidence to support this theory. Not only that, no explanation has been provided to explain the five other aircraft which were described as pursuing the object. They said a number of small aeroplanes circled around it, However, a check later showed that no commercial, private, or RAAF pilots had reported anything unusual in the area. The closest explanation that has been provided to explain the Westall incident is a weather balloon, which was known to have been released in the area that day. However, witnesses affirm that the object that they saw was very different from a weather balloon, and that it had both descended and ascended at high speed, before being chased by other aircraft. If this is the case, the students and teachers of Westall High School may very well have been part of one of the biggest and most impressive mass UFO sightings in history. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to check out Paranormal Amino and take part in the poll I mentioned at the start of the video. Links are in the description. And if you cannot wait until my next video, why not watch one suggested on screen now? Remember, the more you know, the more there is to fear.